Good afternoon, alien enthusiasts, and welcome to another Angry Alien Bulletin. We are going to be following up our last 3i Atlas video with yet another one. But again, to all of you space flight fans, don't worry, because I just got back from France. Actually, the reason I was able to go to France for a couple of days, that's all it was, as a business trip, is because of your support. Because of all of the support that I got in Australia, more than I actually needed, I decided to use some of these funds for other purposes to get more content and a trip to France to tour a rocket factory, the factory belonging to a company called Latitude, and uh, saw some very interesting things there. It's the first time, actually, that I have been to a rocket factory where there are actually people on the floor doing work, where fabrication was in process. They were all very, very busy, and I am looking Looking forward to bringing you all the details of this fascinating startup company, this private spaceflight company, and the unique way that they intend to compete in this extremely competitive market. All that having been said, though, let's talk about 3i Atlas because an interesting development has come up. For those of you who've been watching my channel for a while, you may recall that I have talked a number of times about a theory regarding the anti tail that. That 3i Atlas has, especially in regards to the photographs that were captured by NASA and by the Hubble telescope, which of course part of NASA as well, all of which seem to depict an anti-tail that is actually advancing ahead of the object rather than pointing directly at the sun, which is a fascinating anomaly in and of itself because that just simply shouldn't be happening. The solar wind should either blow the debris, the dust in the direction of the solar wind behind the object as it travels, or the anti-tail, perhaps the object being heated by the sun. Again, this is highly unlikely because we've never seen this happen with a comet, but still heating the side of the comet that's facing towards the sun, therefore the anti-tail advancing ahead of it as material explosively outgasses from the comet ahead of the object as it travels. But what we have never seen is an object where as an anti-tail that, yes, is advancing ahead of the object as it travels, but that anti-tail is not facing the sun. The direction that the object is moving is not towards the sun, actually, because 3i Atlas never really came that close to the sun. The anti-tail is actually just in front of the object, so it is neither being warmed by the sun nor is this material being being affected by the solar wind. That, as I've said, should be impossible. So what if this were a cloud of something else? As I've suggested in previous videos, a cloud of nanomachines advancing in front of 3i Atlas to can perhaps consume usable materials lot of space dust, tiny micrometeoroids and such, especially within our solar system, far more than there is in interstellar space where 3i Atlas originally came from, and it might be using these materials in order to produce more materials for itself, perhaps to produce duplicates of itself, or some kind of probes that it might use as it travels through the solar system, some other purpose. Regardless, it always seemed like a wild theory, especially when I talked about these nanomachines perhaps triggering solar flares. That was always one of my more extreme theories, although I still think a very interesting one, compelling one in my own mind. That being said, though, is there any evidence to suggest that this might actually be the case. Well, according to a recent article released by Avi Loeb, and interestingly, this was about a month after I suggested this possibility to him, turns out that I might have been right. <laughs> Over the month of November 2025, post-perihelion images of the interstellar object 3i Atlas showed a teardrop shape of its coma with an extension of about an arc minute towards the sun. During this same period, the JPL Horizons tracking of 3i Atlas reported a non-gravitational acceleration. Its magnitude is a small fraction on an order of 0.002 of the gravitational acceleration from the sun. 
in the latest version of JPL Horizons, the non-gravitational acceleration scales inversely with the square of the heliocentric distance, that is to say, the object-sun separation, exactly as the sun's gravitational acceleration. That means that the ratio between the two accelerations remains constant along the orbit of 3i Atlas. The dominant component of the non-gravitational acceleration is the radial direction away from the sun. A simple way to incorporate it is to consider 3i Atlas as accelerating in response to a slightly reduced mass of the sun. If 3i Atlas is surrounded by a swarm of objects that do not share its non-gravitational acceleration, then these objects will tend to be closer to the Sun relative to 3i Atlas because 3i Atlas is pushed away from the Sun relative to the objects through its non-gravitational acceleration. Energy per unit mass is a conserved constant in trajectories shaped by the Sun's gravity. However, the trajectory of 3i Atlas has a slightly smaller gravitational binding energy because of its reduced effective mass. If the object started at the same velocity and position as 3i Atlas, then they would have a surplus in gravitational binding energy by a fraction relative to 3i Atlas. However, they would have the same binding energy and track the 3i Atlas if they have the same velocity and are displaced from the heliocentric distance. At the current separation of 3i Atlas from the Sun of 270 million kilometers, Kilometers. The displacement would imply that the objects are closer to the Sun than 3i Atlas by about 54,000 kilometers, corresponding to an angular separation of 0.7 arc minutes on the sky. This separation is comparable to the sunward elongation of the teardrop glow around 3i Atlas. What all of this means is, is that 3i Atlas is being more significantly affected by by non-gravitational acceleration as a halo of objects surrounding it would be. As long as the objects do not experience non-gravitational acceleration from mass loss as a result of solar illumination, they should maintain an anti-tail geometry pointing towards the Sun relative to 3i Atlas and converging to its location at perihelion. A large swarm of objects would have a much larger surface area than that of 3i Atlas, even if the total mass in them is a small fraction of the mass of 3i Atlas. For example, a trillion objects, say a trillion nanomachines, as I have suggested in previous episodes, carrying a total fraction of merely 0 0.001 of the mass of 3i Atlas would amount to a total surface area that is a hundred times larger than that of 3i Atlas. This swarm would create the appearance of a coma that reflects 99% of the sunlight in the glow around 3i Atlas. This is consistent with the fraction of light in the coma within the image of 3i Atlas taken by the Hubble Space Telescope on July 21st, 2025. As long as the non-gravitational acceleration of 3i Atlas scales inversely with the square of helium heliocentric distance, the spatial extent of the objects would be on an order that is related to the heliocentric distance of 3i Atlas and always pointing towards the Sun. This configuration would explain why the teardrop shape towards the Sun existed with a similar angular extent in the glow around 3i Atlas as it was approaching the Sun as well as it is now when 3i Atlas is moving away from the Sun. If the anti-tail is indeed associated with a swarm of non-evaporating objects around 3i Atlas, the interesting question is, what is the nature of these objects? Are they rocky fragments or something else? And of course, they must be something radically different than anything we have seen with a previous comet because we have never seen this phenomenon develop at all. 
any non-gravitational acceleration of any given comet has always gone in conjunction with the tail that it creates. Of course, the reason for that is solar wind is far more powerful than any minor shift in a comet's trajectory because of non-gravitational acceleration. And by the way, the reason comets experience this acceleration is because of explosive outgassing from their surface as they are heated by the sun, sort of a natural rocket thrust. Now, non-gravitational acceleration will push the nucleus while not pushing the coma at the same time, but the shift in trajectory for ordinary comets is insignificant compared to the impact that the solar wind has on any material that happens to be surrounding it or outgassing from it from any given time. That being the case, then, no material is going to be left behind, so to speak, by non-gravitational acceleration. It's going to be blown backwards by solar wind that is a thousand times more powerful than any natural sublimation might be. So we're not going to see this sort of phenomenon with ordinary comets. But if we see a cloud of objects that are unchanged by the solar wind, that is to say, they keep their location regardless of the impact of the solar wind and just travel along with 3i atlas of their own volition they might be left slightly behind by 3i atlas's acceleration again is this possible well it does fit with what we are seeing with this current phenomenon again there's a wide variety of other causes for the anti-tail or it might be a combination of all of these things the million kilometer lances that are spearing out towards the sun along with this shift of 3i atlas's coma also towards the sun that could be a combination of artificial thrusters being used in order to steady the object or give it a little bit more of a push onto the trajectory it needs to be traveling on combined with the cloud of nanomachines that it's using to harvest natural resources sort of an in situ resource utilization not dissimilar to the sorts of strategies we intend to use as we colonize the solar system ourselves Incidentally, I also want to address a recent story that's come out in more of the mainstream scientific periodicals regarding a study suggesting that 3i Atlas is an object that's erupting in ice volcanoes, also known as cryovolcanism. This is a phenomena that, in our solar system anyway, has only been observed on icy moons orbiting various Jovian worlds, the most prominent example being the moon moon of Enceladus that has cryovolcanoes occurring because of extremely powerful tidal forces that are at work on the interior water oceans within Enceladus. At least we think that's what's going on. And as these tidal forces cause this water to essentially bubble and explode to the surface, these ice volcanoes erupt and actually form a new ring around Saturn in the process. Now, now, this does sound interesting, and also it suggests that 3i Atlas might be more like a trans-Neptunian object, also known as a centaur, which, by the way, is something Avi Loeb also suggested. However, I don't buy that cryovolcanoes could possibly explain these million-kilometer lances. 3i Atlas is much smaller than Enceladus, has much smaller reservoirs of water available, Available than Enceladus does, and so therefore should not have cryovolcanoes that are many times more energetic than anything that Enceladus creates. Enceladus's cryovolcanoes tend to peter out after a few thousand kilometers, not a million kilometers. So it's hard to say. And by the way, I think it's quite fascinating and a bit humorous that live science, after reporting this, saying that there's cryovolcanism happening on 3i Atlas, which is something we have never seen on any other comet. Well, that means that 3i Atlas has a surprising amount in common with objects in our own cosmic neighborhood. Yeah, okay, you guys just keep spouting your nonsense while 3i Atlas continues to show us amazing things that we have never seen before.
Intriguing, huh? Once again, I think it makes a great deal of sense. 3i Atlas has lost a lot of materials. It has traveled through the solar system. It has made an extremely long journey to get here. It could have been millions of years since it encountered its last solar system. Then again, if it's capable of directing itself, it might have encountered a lot more solar systems than we think over the millennia, over the eons. That being said, though, as it travels through a solar system, it would definitely have use for any materials that it could gather on its journey through. And it seems to me that nanomachines cannibalizing whatever materials they can get a hold of. And again, we're talking a huge cloud here, thousands and thousands of cubic kilometers of nanomachines that may be gathering enormous amounts of material for the Rei Atlas to make use of. Once again, if this is a Van Neumann probe of some kind, it might actually create a duplicate of itself before it leaves the solar system. Another reason for us to watch this thing very, very closely. But as I said, I found it quite intriguing to discover that in spite of how wild my theory was on the surface, might actually be true. Thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And also please consider supporting this channel on Patreon. All the details are in the description. You get access to early release content as well as access to my exclusive Discord server, a lot of other benefits. If this is something you're interested in, once again, it's in the description. So until next time, stay angry about space. Thank you.